Lateral condyle fracture, in child, fracture of necessity. Overview. Pediatric lateral condyle fractures are the second most common fractures in the pediatric elbow and are characterized by a higher risk of nonunion, malunion, and AVN than other pediatric elbow fractures. Treatment is dictated by the degree of articular displacement and may require CRPP, closed reduction and percutaneous pin fixation, or open reduction. Epidemiology Incidence 17% of all distal humerus fractures in the pediatric population. Dot second most common elbow fracture after supracondylar. Demographics typically occurs in patients aged 6 years location. Most commonly are Salter-Harris 4 fracture patterns of the lateral condyle. Pathophysiology Mechanism of injury. Pool theory. Avulsion fracture of the lateral condyle that results from the pull of the common extensor musculature. Push off theory. Fall onto an outstretched hand causes impaction of the radial head into the lateral condyle causing fracture. Pathoanatomy. Fractures originate proximally at the posterior aspect of the distal humerus metaphysis and extend distally and anteriorly across the physis and epiphysis into the elbow joint. Fracture may extend medially into the trochlear groove, making the elbow unstable and prone to dislocation. Prognosis Outcomes have historically been worse than supracondylar fractures. Articular nature misdiagnosis, and higher risk of malunion slash nonunion. Application centers of elbow. Lateral, external, epicondyl. Ossifies slash ideas at age 11 years. Fuses at age 12 to 14 years. Age of ossification slash appearance and age of fusion are two independent events that must be differentiated. Blood supply. The brachial artery lies anteriorly in the antecubital fossa. Most of the blood supply of the distal humerus comes from the anastomotic vessels that course posteriorly. Milch classification, type 1. Fracture line is lateral to trochlear groove, less common. Elbow is stable as fracture does not enter trochlear groove. Type 2. Fracture line extends medially into trochlear groove, more common, more unstable. Milch classification, type 1. Fracture line is lateral to trochlear groove, less common, elbow is stable as fracture does not enter trochlear groove. Type 2. Fracture line extends medially into trochlear groove, more common, more unstable. Notice the first radiograph. Fracture line lateral to the trochlea groove, consistent with milch type 1. Notice the second radiograph. Fracture line extends medial to the trochlea groove, consistent with milch type 2. Radiograph case courtesy of bullets. History. Fall onto an outstretched hand. Symptoms. Location. Lateral elbow pain and swelling. Severity. May be subtle if fracture is minimally displaced. Physical examination. Inspection. Exam lacks the obvious deformity often seen with supracondylar fractures. Swelling and tenderness are usually limited to the lateral side. Lateral ecchymosis implies a tear in the aponeurosis of the brachioradialis and signals an unstable fracture. Motion.
may have increased pain with resisted wrist extension slash flexion. May feel crepitus at the fracture site. Radiographic anatomy of pediatric elbow. Diagnosis may be difficult before the capitellum is ossified, around age 9 to 10. Lateral elbow ecchymosis as a clinical sign of lateral humeral condylar fractures. Fracture line may not be apparent until 7 to 10 days following injury. Less severe displacement may also have a translational component. Look for lateral soft tissue swelling on AP radiographs. Significant step off of the lateral cortex, which may indicate that there is significant articular discontinuity. Remember the fracture anatomy extends in a posterolateral direction so that often on the AP view there is only a faintly discernible FRX line just above capitellum, but on lateral, or oblique view, fracture line is more visible, extending posteriorly, laterally, and superiorly. Radiographs. Recommended views. AP, lateral, and oblique views of elbow. Internal oblique view most accurately shows fracture displacement because fracture is posterolateral. Look at the radiograph. Internal oblique view demonstrating a fracture line of a lateral condyle. Notice the arrow. Radiograph case court is in a bullets. Optional views. Contralateral elbow for comparison when ossification is not yet complete. Routine elbow stress views are not recommended due to pain and lack of useful information. Findings Fracture fragment most often lies posterolateral which is best seen on internal oblique views. In displaced fractures, the capitellum is laterally displaced in relation to radial head, posteriorly based Thurston Holland fragment on the lateral view. Optional views. Contralateral elbow for comparison when ossification is not yet complete. Routine elbow stress views are not recommended due to pain and lack of useful information. Findings. Fracture fragment most often lies posterolateral which is best seen on internal oblique views. In displaced fractures, the capitellum is laterally displaced in relation to radial head. Posteriorly based Thurston Holland fragment on the lateral view. Notice the radiograph. Case courtesy of A. Professor Frank Gaylard. Radiopedia.org, read 10274. CT scan. Indication. Rarely indicated, only if there is uncertainty as to the type of fracture. MRI. Indication. Provides the ability to assess the cartilaginous integrity of the trochlea. Useful for operative planning of delayed or non-unions. Expensive. Require general anesthesia or sedation to perform the test. Arthrograms generally preferred to MRI. Treatment. Non-operative. Long arm casting four to six weeks. Indications. Only if less than two millimeters displacement in all views. Medial cartilaginous hinge must remain intact. Technique. Cast with elbow at approx 90 degrees as long as swelling is mild. Weekly follow-up and radiographs every week first three weeks including internal oblique view occasionally more than six weeks of casting is needed operative 
Closed reduction percutaneous pining and 3 to 6 weeks in above elbow cast. Indications. Fractures with 2, 4 mm of displacement have intact articular cartilage and can be treated with closed reduction percutaneous pining. Open reduction and fixation plus 3 to 6 weeks in above elbow cast. Indications. Greater than 4 mm of displacement. Open reduction, rather than closed, necessary to align the joint surface. Joint incongruity. Fracture non-union. Supracondylar osteotomy. Indications. Deformity correction in late presenting cubitus valgus, rarely needed. Closed reduction percutaneous pin. Approach. Closed reduction perhaps aided by pushing the fragment anteromedially to close the gap. Instrumentation. Divergent pin configuration most stable. Screw considered for more rigid fixation. Allows early motion. Compresses fracture site. Complications. Pins are less stiff. Screw may need to be removed if crossing the physis. Open reduction internal fixation. Approach. Anterolateral approach as blood supply comes from posteriorly. Soft tissue. Below the skin, dissection to the joint is most often already accomplished by injury. Avoid dissection of the posterior aspect of lateral condyle, source of vascularization. Bone work. Directly visualize the joint reduction, at times the metaphysial reduction may not be perfect, as fracture fragment may have plastic deformation. Open reduction internal fixation. Instrumentation. Most fractures can be fixed with two percutaneous pins, three if comminuted, in parallel or divergent fashion. Single screw for large fragments or non-union. Bone grafting rarely needed. Complications. Pins are less stiff. Screw may need to be removed if crossing the physis. Radiograph. Case court is in affordable nets. Complications, stiffness. Incidence. Most common complication. Risk factors. Stiffness may be an early sign of a non-union or delayed union. Treatment. Usually self-resolving. By 24 weeks 90% of motion returns and full motion is present by 48 weeks. Complications. Delayed union. Fracture that does not heal with 6 weeks of immobilization. Risk factors. Fracture that is seen more than 2 weeks after injury. Treatment may be treated with immobilization if minimally displaced. Surgical treatment if displaced. Must be followed until radiographic union as non-union is common in this scenario. Complications. Non-union. Incidence. Higher rate of non-union than other elbow fractures. Risk factors, non-surgical management, mechanism, theoretical, constant motion at fracture site from pull of the wrist extensors, intra-articular, synovial fluid impede fracture healing, poor metaphysial circulation to distal fragment. Prevent non-union by Preserving soft tissue attachments to lateral condyle. Stable internal fixation. Treatment. Goal is to obtain union of metaphysial fragment, not restore joint surface. 
may require bone graft, or if with screw. Cubitus valgus plus minus tardi ulnar nerve palsy. Due to lateral physio arrest or more commonly a non-union. Slow, progressive ulnar nerve palsy caused by stretch. Incidence? 10%. Less common than cubitus varus. Risk factors. Significant deformities that cause physio arrest. Treatment. Supracondylar osteotomy after skeletal maturity and ulnar nerve transposition. Avascular necrosis. Incidence? Occurs one to three years after fracture. Risk factors. Posterior dissection can result in lateral condyle osteonecrosis, may also occur in the troplea. Fishtail deformity. Area between medial ossification center and lateral condyle ossification center resorbs or fails to develop. Does not predispose to arthritis. Treatment. Supracondylar osteotomy. Lateral overgrowth slash prominence, spurring. Incidence? Up to 50% regardless of treatment, families should be counseled in advance. Risk factors. Result of displacement of the metaphysial fragment in addition to disruption of the periosteal envelope. Lateral periosteal realignment will prevent this from occurring. Spurring is correlated with greater initial fracture displacement. Anteroposterior radiograph demonstrating lateral spur formation, arrowhead, after operative treatment of a displaced lateral condyle fracture. The prominent lateral spur creates the clinical appearance of mild cubitus varus. Growth arrest, incidence, rare complication, risk factors, varus or valgus deformity, treatment. Young patients may be treated with bar resection or osteotomy. Older patients best treated with completion of the epiphysiodesis and osteotomy. Unsatisfactory appearance of surgical scar. Thanks for watching my video. Do not forget to subscribe to my non-profit YouTube channel.